is very headstrong. Um, he, from what I understand, and he goes in with it's my way or the highway type of situation. And you just don't go into an interview as a first time head coach like that. That's what I've been told. And it's kind of shown this year, especially with him taking over the hundred percent of the calling plays. So you're saying he is a reason why one of the reasons why the offense has seen so stagnant. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Well, I mean, he calls the plays for the most part. I mean, yeah, and he hasn't. He didn't tonight. And I think part of the problem with tonight was is that, you know, maybe it's getting back into the groove of things to a certain degree. Everybody's already um, kind of, you know, down on themselves to a degree. And they're just trying to figure things out. But I think they will. I think it's just going to take a little time. I don't, I don't want anybody to expect them to be – you know, this team that's just going to change overnight because it's not going to happen. But I think they will figure it out. And I think this was a learning experience again for them. Um, I'm trying to find the positives in all of this because – I mean, there, I mean, we could put on the negatives all day and we should probably change the positive. But Derek Gordon, yeah. Earl Williams, I mean, that was positive. Mahomes really didn't turn the ball over. I mean, no. he started eight for eight and then went the rest of the way. Didn't look best, but great. But, I mean, hey, they showed up. I don't know what his yardage was. Did you even see his yardage? It was uh, under 200. And I was surprised. Like, he's up for 200 yards. It feels like it's been 150. So Yeah, yeah. I mean, he only had 117 yards at the half. Mm -hmm. So – um, I know he picked up some pretty good yardage in the second half. Um, I think it was more than I think you sure it was under 200 because it seemed like I, he threw. I thought it felt like two under 200, but it's probably like closer to 300. I yeah, think. I think he, he picked up some pretty good yards. Yeah, um, so I think it's just going to take a little bit of time for everybody to get back into their own mindset mm -hmm. and the winning mindset, and they're going to get there. Um, a lot of it's going to have to do with positivity from the fans and you know, positivity from everything. I mean, it's just going to have to go back to that winning continuity brotherhood style situation that they were in prior to all this shit happening. And um, it's going to take, it, it, you know, it, 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 it's not one person. It's going to take, uh, it, what, what's that saying? You know, that it takes a, it takes a, what is it, a world to, you know, it takes a whatever. village to raise a kid. Yeah, it takes a village to raise a kid. And it takes a whole group to fix all the issues. And I think they'll do it eventually. And I do it's too. Just the way they've been playing, it's just like I know. I don't know. We're looking like the 2015 Chiefs. It's scary. You know? I mean, it, it is scary. And you know, and Mahomes is the one thing I love about him is the fact that every time you listen to him talk, it's like, you know, he after the, even the post-game interview, it was, you know, he saw the positives and things. He saw the positives in the defense and how they they came out and they played. They made some great plays. Willie Gay, look, I'm going to say this. Him and Nick Bolton are the future. They're the future. They are the absolute future of this team. Um, and defensively, I don't know why. Again, and I and I think Juan Thornhill is too. Juan Thornhill is another future player in this team. Uh, the future of this team. There's a lot of future players on this team defensively. Chris Jones stepped up tonight being back on the inside again, like we talked about, like we knew he was going to be. We announced that, I think, before anybody did. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, it's permanent now. Um, he belongs where he's he at. He looks so much better inside. He looks so much – Chris Jones looks so much better inside. Oh, yeah. And that he, experiment should never happen to begin with. It, it, it didn't make no sense. Well, he wanted that to try just it. A lack of, it. It just seemed like a lack of each not bringing the right defensive players on the edge. Well, and it, you know, a lot of that had to do with cap. A lot of it had to do with, you know, a lot of things, but he wanted to try it as well. I mean, of course he lost weight for it. And weirdly enough, we, you know, somebody has said he is. And the crazy part is that when we had Charles, um, was it Charles Goldman on the show, you know, he said, well, you know, he lost weight. And I said, well, maybe he gained muscle for it. And I'll tell you what, he sure looks like a lot more versatile and a lot stronger in the middle right now because he wasn't getting pushed around nearly as much and mm -hmm. he was doing he did great tonight i mean against a pretty strong that other jones is a pretty strong guy for oh, yeah. for the giants that offensive uh, lineman and he did a pretty good job against him so um i think reed had a pretty decent play uh, a couple of plays tonight um frank clark again came out of nowhere and 
and then he got hurt. I don't know if you guys noticed, but he was limping yeah, off the field. That. So, oh, um, man. I don't, I, I think I want to keep him next year. I don't think they're going to do it. No, but no, I mean, he's, we'll see what happens. He's gone. I can promise you that he's not going to be here next year. Um, I, I mean, I, I've been in his corner, but it just kind of, I have to, but points. I don't, know. I don't think he's going to be here next year. Turn around, but yeah. I mean, unless he completely changes everything about everything. Uh, I mean, I mean, everything, I don't think he's going to be here next year. Um, it's, you know, one thing I want to bring up because we hear this on from these fans, you know, cut him now, cut him now. I don't know why they're keeping him cut him, cut him, cut him again. You cannot cut a player. If you understand anything about a contract or a cap, it's very simple numbers. If you cut him today, you lose $37 million. Yeah, if you, you guys want to cut that. him that's that check. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. that's going to mess up the Chiefs. You can't yeah. do that. You can't you do that. You wait end the season or find a way to get out of the contract now. But they're Exactly. And that. nobody's going to pick him up. Nobody's going to buy that contract out. So, look, get over the fact that you can't cut him. So everybody stop saying that. It's not going to happen. So get over it. What um, about Neiman and Sorensen? I'm just kind of curious. Are their cap hits bigger or no? They're the small. No, I think I think. I mean, uh, would it be worth it though at this point? Would it Would it be worth it? Well, I think it just depends on what their their guarantee is because I think Sorensen was only like one point nine or two million dollar deal, so it wasn't a huge contract we have like for $2 one year. Dollars right now too. Yeah, so we only got a couple million. So. Oh yeah, it kind of brings us to zero. Yeah, and our and it, well, it really depends on what our, and then we could easily he could easily you know we still got until. Is it Wednesday at three o'clock? So, mm -hmm. if Veach is still working like I'm told he is, um, you never know. There may be a trade still in the works. Again, uh -huh. everybody that keeps bitching about Veach and not making trades, it's not a matter of him not trying. Nobody wants to trade with us. And everybody thinks that we're in such a bad situation that they're asking for everything that we don't have. And here's another thing. Let's bring this up, Caleb, while we got the opportunity to bring it up. Mm -hmm. Why in the world would any smart team give up the future of this organization, especially a GM that knows how to bring in draft picks and has been fantastic at finding immediate starters mm -hmm. in the draft whether it be early or late round for a one or a half year rental it's well, we I, I understand we can't do that I, I i i see what you're saying i think when it comes to it the first round pick you might i see kind of value in trading the first round pick away that's okay you're gonna get more picks yeah i can understand that but the second has been he's been able to get uh second to six he's been great Nick Bolton, Nick yeah Bolton, he's been getting him good players I mean, I can understand. There is ways of training the future. I don't know. If I was Veach and I want to give up the first round pick, I would want a day two and a day three pick in return. A like, I want a second and probably a fourth. Yeah. Maybe one other pick, too. And that just kind of depends on what happens in the of all this season. But what I've realized, he is done good at bringing players. I just feel like in certain positions, he's lacked in bringing in players. Like, we only had Josh Candle and Alex Okafor. Alex Okafor last year was hurt half the time. Tano Passano is doing great in St. Lu in uh, New Orleans. And then Emmanuel Ogba is doing great in Miami. So the common dominator is this. Either he got they all got stuck on Spag's depth chart and he didn't teach them the right techniques, or they just weren't good in our, our um good in our team. I think it was the I think it was the first. It wasn't the latter. I think it was the first. Because it just makes no sense. We got three guys who are balling out on three different teams. You're know, like, they can't help with us. Exactly. I mean, Tano was a a, a Dope dude, dope dude. Um, out of Villanova, that's not really a football school. Second round pick. Dorsey picked him up. I expect him to be like, do great things, man. It didn't seem like they could not get to go. And then all of a sudden with New Orleans, he's figured it out. So I mean, I don't know. It's just it's know. it's a matter of being utilized. And if you're not going to utilize him because of a depth chart, then you really have no business in this day and age being a defense a defensive or offensive coordinator or any kind of coach because it doesn't it doesn't make a bit of difference on a depth chart anymore. It just doesn't. I mean, okay, here's the thing. You just took Nick Bolton, a rookie. Second okay, round pick. Second round, second pick, round pick. And he went from a second round pick rookie this year to wearing the, you know, getting the green dot. So what, uh, 
why are you so stuck on this depth chart shit with everybody else if that's the case i mean neiman's still getting in there yeah i understand you can't you can't play him every single play but when you're putting your two worst defenders in on third down uh -huh. that's a problem yeah that's that's, a th that's a, sorry sorry about that yeah that is a major problem whenever you're having that issue and is. I'm very concerned moving forward because, and it just on the third down plays too. They run a screen. It's like it's a scripted at this point. Yeah, and it's almost it's almost, you know, the trick play at the beginning of the game that should have been held for later on in the game. I I, I agree. I think I don't know. I just noticed every time the Chiefs try to do it. A trick play like at home, it never seems to work. Yeah, never at home. Seems, I mean, the offense seems to falter. I've noticed that recently in many games. They try a trick play, it doesn't work out, and then they kind of go, Oh, well, we're just gonna do the basic stuff, and they just kind of go down and down. And yeah, down. yeah. It's like they're not digging deep into that playbook. And I know part of it is the reason, part of it's because they think that maybe the receivers can't, some of the newer receivers or even some of the veteran receivers haven't grasped a lot of it. Um, I know that Tyreek has, I know that Kelsey has, they know that, that those two guys have, but then you got, and they know that for the most part, Hardman really has, but then you got to worry about Robinson. You got to worry about Josh Gorman that doesn't know the playbook really. And, you know, we don't know how much of it Pringle really knows, although he's made some phenomenal catches, you know, our best year with Mahomes was with two average wide receivers that were second or third and fourth round wide receivers, Albert Wilson and, and um, Chris Conley. If you remember, they were making phenomenal catches. I mean, just out of nowhere, making some stupid catches. I know if Wilson was here the last year. Well, the first game Mahomes started, he got Wilson paid. And then Chris Conley, he made his numbers seem pretty good. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and that was Mahomes. Wasn't that his year? He went for 50 and five. That was 18, right? Yeah, yeah. Conley was here. Wilson went to land. I mean, went to Miami. Yeah, that's right. Because so, they had that one good game, and then they, he got paid. Yeah, that's right. So I mean, it's just weird that it, it kind of goes to show you two different things. One, you got to have somebody with a really high football IQ to be able to play in this system, and which we've got players that can. Some of them, I don't think they've been tested enough to be able to know if they've got it, and that's on both sides of the ball. So um, it's just going to take a little bit of time. I mean, a lot of things have changed. I mean, it just is what it is. People don't realize how much Sammy played a part. You know, Sammy played a hell of a part in, the, in this offense. And we were hoping that we were going to be able to replace him. Um, so far, they haven't let Josh do a whole lot. And I'm kind of yeah, surprised. And Andy said in an interview, he's close. Okay, you've been staying close for three weeks, but all right. I mean, well, I mean, hopefully, you know, maybe they've got to get him in this next game. They ain't got I wonder a choice. If he has to, I wonder if he has to pass the, the test on the playbook. <laughs> Not being funny. No, <laughs> I, I see. I mean, you say he's close, like for three weeks. I'm like, so is he having to take a test? I mean, yeah, no kidding. I mean, I don't know. yeah. I mean, I got to tell you this. Um, I know his football IQ is off the charts. Oh, and yeah. I just say let him go on there. Let's see what he can do. But yeah, I mean, going go against going against Green Bay. So meticulous. Yeah, I mean, you've got to get every weapon you've got out on the field with with Green Bay. You just do. Yeah, now, gotcha. granted, we're lucky to a degree because mm -hmm. I think uh, is it Devonte Adams is out for a while. So that's kind of a good thing. Yeah, COVID. Well, he got he, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is he still out or not? Uh. I think he probably still will be out. I know he tested positive, so it kind of yeah. depends on what happens from there. We'll okay. know probably by the middle of this week. I thought somebody got injured as well, so I'm not uh, real sure. One of their tight ends tore their ACL. Yeah. So I know that. I mean, that doesn't really. I mean, it's it's you're still talking about Aaron Rodgers and a really good football team. So mm -hmm. it's just going to be um, it's going to be a test, and you know our guys are going to have to pass it. They're going to have to pull out all the stops at this point moving forward they're just going to plot all the stops no more of the vanilla offenses no more of the no more of any of it they're just going to have to go out there and play and hopefully the coaches draw it up and and pull it out you know that's all i can say at this point but there was some positives in this game the defense did there look better positives. yeah the defense, the defense did look like better for the most part and the offense didn't look horrible they just 
looked very um almost 